Hi everybody and welcome to a new amazing Max stuff video. So this will be the second video of our uh, starting with OpenGL series. So this is the patch we created last time. We created this simple scene in which we can um, in which we can move around with our camera and uh, we have a plane and a sphere which are lightened by the default light that is placed on the scene which we don't see. Um, we can move around using the W, w A, S, D, Q, Z keys and we can rotate um, the scene with our mouse, can change the poly mode, so how the polygons are drawn in our shape here, so as field polygons, as points, uh, as a wireframe or as points. And if you don't have this patch, you can uh, always download it from the link in my last uh, video. I will put a link to that video also in the description. Uh, so let's actually go on with our scene. Let's improve it. Let's uh, try to understand a bit more of how OpenGL works inside Max. So first thing, as you can see, the camera is tilting. So every time we rotate uh, using the mouse, so dragging the mouse and clicking, uh, the camera kind of tilts and uh, this is maybe not what we want so we can give an attribute to ggl camera which is tripod and we set it to one so it means that the camera is kind of staying on a tripod which will make sure so will guarantee to us that we will never tilt the camera it's never inclinated okay then uh, we could also say that we want our camera always to look at our sphere. Now our sphere is in the center of the of the, our three-dimensional world, so we can give an attribute to our camera and tell it to look at 0, 0, 0. Now our camera will look at 0, 0, 0, but in a moment I move, the camera will stop, um, will stop to look at the center. So in order to fix this, we have to give it another attribute, which is lock look, and then we set this to one. Now this will give us a different behavior because every time we move the camera, the focus will always stay on the center of the world. So this is uh, this is could be pretty useful for a lot of cases. So in this case, the camera will always look at the center, which is where our sphere is. Okay, so let's keep this in mind. Then let's move on with the um, grid shape appearance. Now, uh, you probably know that there is something called a texture inside the 3D graphics. A texture is like an image that we can apply to a shape in order to change its appearance. So let's do that. We are going to apply an image to our, uh, to our sphere in order to kind of wrap this image around the sphere and then maybe one around the, um, the floor. So let's create an object called jit.gl texture. And we have to give it the name of the world, which is my world. So this is our texture. Now this texture also needs a name in order for the shapes to, to know to which texture they have to uh, refer. So let's give it a name. So there is an attribute called name and let's give it a name like text zero. So this means this is kind of our first texture. And this will give it this name. Now this texture is empty. So in the moment we go in our grid shape and we say texture text zero, it will apply the default image that is inside the texture, which is this kind of chessboard here. Now let's fill it actually with an image. So we can fill it even with uh, an image or with a sequence of images, so like a movie. For example, let's start with an image. I will create a matrix, a JIT matrix object. And I will attach the output of the JIT matrix to the GGL texture. And I will create uh, a message with the ma uh, command import movie and then comma and then a bang. This means that we are going to import an image. So this is the image I chose, like uh, it's a texture of hexagons. We can actually also take a look at this image by, uh, let's actually bring our texture down here by attaching a JITP window on the output of our texture and then we can send a bang to the texture and uh, we see the texture we are using which is this uh, 
pattern of hexagons. Okay, so our sphere, our shape now has taken this image as its texture. Let's try with another one. Let's say that I use this image. Now this image will have this. Uh, now the, the sphere will have this image as a texture applied. But as you can see, uh, the image doesn't have its own colors. But it's been a multi the color of the texture has been multiplied for the color that we gave to the shape. For example, if we give it a color of white, this will be the original color of the of the texture. We can change this behavior by changing an attribute on GGL Texture. So we can click on the right with the right button on the input of GGL Texture and choose the attribute uh, apply. By default, the attribute is set to modulate, which is uh, going to multiply the color of the image for the color of the shape. But we can also uh, set it to to blend decal makes uh, another effects again, and then we have replace which basically is quite similar to decal, it basically just replaced the color of the shape with the color of the texture. So even if the shape was red, like this, it doesn't matter because the color of the texture is going to replace the color of the shape. So let's set it back to 1, 1, 1. Uh, we can uh, add the code this attribute inside our shape with uh, writing apply replace. And then we can we have to bang again on the matrix actually in order to send again the image from the matrix to the texture because when we uh, modify the texture it's basically like if we created it for the first time from scratch. So the problem now is that in this case the light is not going to affect uh, uh, our shape anymore. Instead, if we use modulate, uh, the light will have an effect on our shape, which can be actually the preferred the preferred behavior. So let's actually replace this uh, with modulate. And if we want, then we can, let's bang again. And if we want, then we can set it again to replace or something else. So, okay, for the moment, let's keep it like this. We can also use uh, uh, a movie to fill the texture. So for example, we can take a movie here from Max one of the default movies, we can uh, put it here and as you can see the movie is going is getting used as a texture for the sphere. Now the chicken movie is pretty big, it's full HD, so I'm going to use another one, the blading guy. So set it to loop and we have the uh, video being used as a texture. I will go back to my original image. So I went back to the hexagons. As you can see now they are white because the color of the texture is white, the color of the shape is white, so white multiplied by white gives us white. Um, very good. Okay, let's see at another way in which we can improve the appearance of our shape. There is an object which is called jit.gl material. So let's give it the name of the world. This object uh, contains a shader and we will see what shader are uh, a bit on the future. But this object contains a shader which kind of uh, um, creates a different lightning uh, function for the shape, uh, different from the default one. Now let's attach this object, the GGL material, not to our sphere, but to our floor. So this is actually the floor. Let's write this down. And this is actually the sphere. So let us, uh, let's attach it to our floor. Now, as you can see, the floor became black. But if we go below it, we can see that it's blue on the other side. That's because the normals, uh, when, at, when using GGL materials, the normals of a plane get reversed. So let's actually write it down. When using GGL material, the normals of the plane get reversed. Now, this probably doesn't tell you much, uh, but we will see what normals are in the near future. But uh, you just have to know that they are uh, what allow us to calculate the light on an object. And if they are on the other side, it means that the light is being calculating only on the other side, uh, which is wrong for us. So we want to rotate it instead of uh, 90 degrees, we want to rotate it minus 90 degree or 270 degrees. Okay, so we basically flipped it. 
Now, in this way, as you can see, um, the floor got a much better lightning model than as it was before. For example, let's uh, try to delete. And this is how it looks like. The lightning is not really having much of an effect on it. And if we use the GGL material, the lightning looks much better. So, this is how we can improve the, uh, the appearance of an object. But take a look at this. If you attach the GGL material on the grid shape object, it loses its texture. <laughs> and that's because the GGL material has an attribute, uh, has a texture on its own, uh, which is basically uh, replacing the one of the GGL grid shape object. In order to set the texture of the GGL material, also to using the GGL material, we have to pass the texture. So let's bring it back here. Oh, let's really, actually let's create a sender. So send text zero. We'll attach it here. Let's create a receiver here. And we have to attach it to the first input of the GGL material, which is the diffuse texture, which basically means so. We will see what all these inputs are in, the, in also in the near future. But the first input means kind of the color of the object, the color that is going to be applied to every pixel of the object. So let's bang here. And we see that we got our texture again and also the lighting. So we also have the lighting on the object. So pretty good. Can also use the video. If we double click on the GGL material, we can see this... Uh, window appearing, which is the GGL material editor. Uh, from here, we can modify the appearance of our object using this kind of editor. So for example, we can modify the specular model and uh, we can modify the color of the object by using one of these presets, or we can even uh, choose our own color here. So we can have a bit of fun uh, using this uh, built-in editor. I have to say that this is a Bit, uh, it's a bit buggy sometimes, or at least it was in Mach 7. I think it's kind of improved in Mach 8. It was a bit buggy, but, but it's definitely usable. Now, one thing that you could uh, probably have noticed, and that it's a bit of a problem in my version of Max, I don't know if it's only a Windows-related problem, or it's only maybe my own computer-related problem, but maybe it's also your case, which is, uh, whenever I move the camera, the light actually doesn't uh, it doesn't stay put, but it looks like if it's coming from the camera itself, which is actually kind of wrong. So in order to fix that, um, we can create our own GGL light object, which we anyway we were going to create in the near future. Uh, so let's actually do it now. Let's actually to start to put a bit of uh, sub patches in our patch in order to make this a bit more um, a bit more neat. So I will encapsulate uh, the camera. All the objects related to the camera and I press to encapsulate I press the uh, command plus uh, command plus shift plus E so this is the command to encapsulate and so we have our camera inside our sub patch now since we don't need to uh, have it outside for the moment and we can also encapsulate our texture here so let's create let's encapsulate this call it text zero text zero let's put it here uh, of course after i encapsulate i have to reload the image again okay so let's create our ggl light so i will create this object called ggl light uh, my world and now as you can see when we move around the light will be always at its default uh, position and it will not follow the camera so this is a, a little fix for that the default position of the light we can look at it by checking the position attribute. Uh, by default, it's one, 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 which means that it's in the right corner, uh, uh, projected uh, in the direction of the screen, and uh, one position on the top. Basically, we can also visualize it by creating another GGL grid shape, my world, setting the color to white, not setting any lighting enable, setting the scale to something small, like 0.1, and we can give it the same position of the light. And this is basically where our light is. As you can see, it makes sense because uh, this is where, from where the light is coming onto the sphere. Okay, um, let's actually stop it also here for this video. In the next video, we are going to talk a bit about uh, light types. 
and about how we can make our shape looking super good by using our GGL material object. Uh, but for the moment, let's stop it here with this one. So I hope this was useful and introduced some new concepts and uh, you can download the patch for, uh, for free from my Patreon and if you want to support, this is of course uh, gladly welcomed. So uh, thank you a lot for following and see you in the next video. Ciao! Thank you.